Hi and welcome to part two of our little series about photographing and editing Milky Way images. If you've missed part one, no problem, just click on the info button here, which brings you right to part one, where we have taken all the images and already processed a time lapse in Lightroom of the Milky Way moving across the sky. Today, however, we're going a step further. We're talking about stacking images for noise reduction and uh, we're really going deeper into the editing in Lightroom and Photoshop. So why are we taking several images of the same part of an ice sky and then stack them? Okay, Milky Way or night star images are always long exposures. 15, 20, 25, 30 seconds, that alone is a noisy business already. Plus, for the Milky Way, for the sky, we're shooting on higher ISO. The higher the ISO, the more noise we add. Now, you may say Lightroom Photoshop has denoise functions. That is right, and we are going to use them later on. But the denoise, when we're using it, we always lose clarity and a little bit of crispiness in the image. Noise itself is a random thing in the image. So two images, right, taken after, one after another, the noise or the noise pattern will always look different. Clever software now can identify the stars and uh, can also identify that noise using algorithms to reduce that noise. This is what we're gonna do. Depending on the platform you're working on, if you either have an Apple Macintosh, then you have the option, it's a program called Starry Landscape Stacker. It's not free, I think it costs at the moment 39 pound here in the UK, available on the Apple App Store. If you're on a PC, then uh, the software we're using is called Sequitur. Sequitur is free, the author is asking to donate coffee and I think that's a good idea to do so. Um, because I'm working in both worlds or across both platforms here, I am in a lucky position that I can pick the best of both worlds. Before we can stack the images, we have to import everything onto our computer and make a few preparations in Lightroom. Okay, here we are in Lightroom. And if you remember from the last video, I said uh, I will take about uh, 20 images of the same scenery of the night sky. First thing we're gonna do, we're changing to the developing mode and making a few minor corrections. We're not going very far here in that first step. It's very dark what I've taken here. I'm increasing the exposure, take the highlights out a little bit. Then I'm adding a little bit of light in the curves here. Not too much, we're really working on it later. More important here is that we are reducing the sharpening to absolutely zero. We're not sharpening here. And the same with the noise re reduction and the color noise. We're taking both these sliders all the way left. We're taking it completely out. In terms of profile corrections, I am shooting here with my Canon 16 to 35 and uh, it works. It may happen that the stacking later on will have difficulties if you are activating the lens profile correction before the export. If so, leave it off here, stack the images, and you can activate it afterwards. That's pretty much it. We're not doing much more here, but now we are simply selecting all of our images, synchronize the settings, make sure we have them all, especially um, including the white balance that we are not having any changes in there. In the next step, we are going to export our images and yeah, put them in the subfolder, call it Lightroom Free here. The image format, we do not want to lose any information. So no JPEGs, we're exporting as a TIFF in an sRGB color profile, no compression and 16-bit. We also do not resize at this stage, nothing at all. And we simply export the images. While the export is running, we're choosing the first image of our foreground, which has a different setting, is way brighter, and I took it on even higher ISO, ISO 6400, for 30 seconds each. Turned out it might be a little too bright even, so I'm taking the exposure out a bit, but I want to introduce more shadows. So the shadow you see here in the center was actually from the moon lighting the scene behind me, and that's uh, the shadow from the hill I'm standing on. There's a bit too much highlights for my taste. So the entire left side and the right hand corner is too dark. I'm bringing the shadows in a little more just to balance the scene. No sharpening, no noise reduction 
and uh, we're going to export these images as well using the exact same settings as before. Good, when the export of all the TIFF files is done, we can switch to our stacking program. In that case, Sequitur, which I'm having right here. First thing we need to do, we need to import the star images, simply by double clicking on the star images, selecting my folder, and from number nine to, to 27, these are the images for the sky. I open that. Got them all here. <clears throat> it automatically chooses a base image. Um, number 18, if you look at the list above, it's right the base image out of the middle. So this is the one where it's going to average the, the images before and the images after too. And noise images and vignetting images are basically, well, there are dark frames. I haven't taken any. They really help to reduce hot pixels, cold pixels, but uh, I haven't taken any so we don't need it, but we do need to define an output file. I'll put that back in here and call it uh, stars.tiff. So now at the bottom we have a few options. First of all, in uh, the sky itself, we want to align the stars. We do not want to create star trails, we want to align them. Uh, we have a few options. Accumulation would simply take every light pixel you have, everything that looks like a star, and uh, put it into the stack. But that would also include, let's say, uh, you have satellites or aircrafts in it. And if we are simply selecting the best pixels, um, we're removing them, taking them out. So you can choose between loose and strict. I'll leave it right in the middle. What we do need to do, we freeze the ground because even though we're stacking that separately, I don't want to really uh, have that kind of al um, aligned. It gives a very weird effect. We don't want it. In the next step, we're going to choose our sky region. It is not the full area, but uh, we are masking it out with an, an irregular mask. And as you can see here at the bottom, fill the sky with a brush. When we're moving our mouse over it, we have a little cursor. And when we start painting it, it gives that funky weird green here and we're simply painting into the area which we want to have aligned, our sky area. Reducing it with the mouse wheel to work a little more accurate. That does not need to be perfect, really not. And uh, the software itself does a really good job in uh, selecting the areas. I still invest a little more time in it. And when we're clicking on auxiliary highlight, all red in the foreground, all green for the stars. A few more options. Uh, the auto brightness, I don't like the functionality, I leave it off. Well, I personally don't want a high dynamic range, don't need it. Um, but we are removing dynamic noise. And uh, the distortion effect, this is when uh, you're activating or not activating your lens profile correction before you uh, export these TIFFs here. And uh, that helps aligning the stars in the corners. So I turn it on here. And you can also activate the reduce light pollution function. That scenery here is very light polluted, so I simply turn it on. But uh, the others, I don't want to enhance any starlight or merge four pixels, which would give us a smaller output. Uh, also not a time lapse in here, and the color space stays with, with sRGB. When we click start, um, the software starts processing, analyzing every single image, and is going to put them together. It's going to take a moment and we simply wait until it's done. It depends on how fast your computer is. Turns out my PC laptop here isn't the fastest machine in the world. It took a good two and a half minutes. When we're clicking close, it's going to load our result. Waiting for that. And here it is. This is uh, how it looks after the stack. But I give you a nice uh, before and after comparison when we're back in Lightroom. Um, for now, I discard that project and open a new one. Don't want to save it. And we open the second set of images by double clicking the star images. And this time the star images are from 29 to 35. We open them, creating our output. Same folder here and call it foreground.tiff. So this time, time the settings are slightly different. Instead of aligning the stars, we are creating star trails. That means 
the image position doesn't change and we are not looking at the stars we've already did that and uh, we're looking at the foreground we want to noise average the foreground images so therefore simply clicking trails um yeah full area that's fine the auto brightness off remove dynamic noise we're simply doing the same action as we did before but this time not for the sky area but for the foreground area and we're going to blend them together later in photoshop but uh, let's finish this job here first yeah less images only took uh, 30 seconds we're closing loading the image it's already saved on the hard disk and this is how that looks so we have a nice clean crisp and clear foreground and uh, the stars as we told the software have turned into trails so now we can close this here don't need it anymore and uh, we're going back to the mac back into lightroom okay little pc has done its job stacking is done and uh, now we want to get the two tiffs we have created back into lightroom so i could actually uh, right click in the library uh, module right click on my folder click on synchronize folder but as you see it would import me a lot of other stuff which i have already prepared and i don't want it right now so i'm simply clicking on import choosing my folder and now it only lets me allow the foreground.tiff and the stars.tiff which are exactly the two ones we've just stacked when they're in here let's simply do a comparison and see what actually the result is we have still in the library module and now we are comparing that one with the one right next to it okay let's start in this area here. so on the left hand side is our stacked image and on the right hand side this is our raw file or yeah what we have exported before i mean that uh, difference is very obvious in terms of noise isn't it and especially here in the night sky where we here have that uh, these magenta spots everywhere i mean uh, that is quite a difference isn't it we can also check the other one here check this here so now this i think is pretty obvious what uh, we hear on the left hand side in our single original image there is just yeah it's a noisy something now look what stacking has recovered here on the right hand side we can really see the structures here and um, i really think that is a massive improvement now we are going a little step further in uh, the processing let's start with our star image here and now we're making a few basic settings the difficulty as you see is the light pollution on the horizon is something i want to keep as low as possible nevertheless i'm going to increase the exposure a bit look how with, without doing anything how much clearer the milky way is coming out in the image okay let's just do some basic adjustments so the exposure but not too much because i really mm, really want to avoid that pollution here don't want to lift shadows bit of whites reducing the blacks and uh, same the s curve but not not really really too much and the clarity i mean see when i move the clarity slider what happens to the milky way itself how it all of a sudden pops but unfortunately it makes a few areas of the image pop i do not really want so we need to do some selective modifications first of all increasing the exposure yeah by a full stop now we're reducing or trying to reduce the light pollution see that works by adding a radial filter and simply taking the highlights down on the outside that already looks more even a bit of the light pollution in the foreground may even add to the scene next step we're adding a second radial filter and this time i want to make the milky way a little more pop my favorite slider here is really the clarity i mean that is quite impressive what the clarity slider does to the milky way on the other hand i also want to reduce the texture because the stars around are just too disturbing maybe doing it like that and reducing texture in the overall image 
go to same with the highlights because we only want to make the Milky Way pop and not the rest of the stars. But I think that's way easier to fix in Photoshop. And at the moment the sky looks a bit too magenta for my taste on that screen here. So I'm changing the white balance and uh, the tint. But because these lights on the horizon here are way too contrasty and way too intense, so we're going down to the saturation and taking the yellow saturation out. It helps already, but what if we're adding another radial filter only for that area of the sky here, or that area of the image? Inverted, first of all, taking the contrast out, being careful that we're not creating a, a halo. So part one of our image, I think this is pretty much as far as we go in Lightroom. And now we're going to our sky image, uh, to our foreground image, where we just completely ignored the foreground in the first image. Now we're completely ignoring the sky. I don't want that and I only want to focus on the foreground. What that requires here, a little bit more contrast. We should be good to go. Lightroom has done its job for now. We're selecting both images and um, choosing edit and we open them both in Photoshop. Now we have uh, opened both of our images in Photoshop and automatically as layers. As you can see in the bottom layer here is our foreground image where we have the trail stars which we don't want and the top layer is the image which we want to use for the star part. How do we bring them both together? We're going to use layers, masks, luminance masks. If you are familiar with these techniques, fine. If not, you know my little info button here in the corner. If you click that, uh, it will lead you directly to a video where I in depth explain the basics. Watch that and we don't need to go through these steps in every video. Okay, bringing them together. Um, the first idea could be we're using our quick selection tool and trying to mask the sky area here. But as you see in this area, it doesn't really work. Sure, we could choose select and mask, but uh, I really want to avoid that. So we're deleting this selection here. Instead, I am choosing the foreground layer where we have a nice separation here between foreground and the stars and this area here. And we are creating a set of luminance masks. And what it does, here we have in our channels, our brights, darks and the midtones. Now we are making our top layer visible and we are adding a black layer mask in the top layer. Choosing our channels and what we want to blend in on top of the bottom layer is the bright parts of the sky and we are choosing that here. Yeah, I think that's a good start. We're choosing the brights too. Command click on it and it's selected and now we are choosing the layer mask we've just created using our brush tool in a white color making it nice, big and smooth and we begin to paint in over the sky here. Simply painting in over the area we want it. And that, yeah, here the Milky Way begins to appear in that area, but that does not quite seem to be enough. And we're choosing our brights of one. So we're simply including more of the brights here, going back to our layer mask, and carry on painting in, painting in here the area. With Command H, we can make the selection itself invisible. Yeah, I think that looks already pretty much all right here. The next step, we deactivate our mask and now we finish the blending of our sky area. Take your time, simply paint over the sky area here. And that's pretty much it. So what we did now, we've retained our foreground and when I make the top layer visible, we've nicely blended in only the sky part of it. Now let's start adapting both parts of the images. First of all, adjusting brightness and contrast for both parts until they actually match better together. You can make that a bit brighter. I mean, it was a moonlit scene, so that only affects the foreground. And we're doing the same for uh, the top layer. We just connect or we, we hook that adjustment layer to our top layer only. So when I make extreme adjustments, only the sky will be affected and not the foreground. 
both parts are actually nicely adapted. For now, I still want to keep these layers because uh, when we're working our way through the through the image, we simply may want to make further modifications and uh, adjustments. For now, we leave it like this. Before we continue, we delete the luminance masks we've created. You remember, we've created them on the bottom layer only. And what I do now, we simply create a new set of luminance masks, and this time for the new modified entire image. Now I'm quite happy with the foreground. Let's focus on uh, the stars on the sky. So what I want here in the area where the Milky Way is, I want to increase the contrast and only in that area. So what I'm doing, I'm simply inverting the layer mask of that adjustment layer. Okay, taking my white brush. Now I paint in in white in the layer mask just to yeah, add the contrast here in the areas where I really want it. The next step, the curves. The curves layer is pretty important and it really helps us to work the detail in the Milky Way out. So you see what happens? It, it's adding contrast, making the, the darks darker and the brights brighter. So again, we are inverting the layer mask and now we are only going over the Milky Way itself. The area we want to make pop. And this is pretty much how I work my way through the image and make modifications for parts of the image. Like the next thing now, I want to add a little more contrast to make the darks in the Milky Way really pop. Invert my mask and now I'm choosing a darks mask only for these dark areas in the Milky Way. Yeah, let's go for the darks free into the mask, make it invisible. And now we're painting it over and uh, the bright parts are not affected. Only the contrasts here in the dark areas. Quite pleased with that so far. I'll give you a little break for now. I will finish up that image. And I mean, you get the idea. Working out different areas, working out darks, working out brights for all the modifications I make. Curves, contrast, exposure, colors color intensity, color balance for everything. These luminance masks are extremely valuable for me. A few more final adjustments, a little bit more fine tuning. It's totally up to you how far you want to go. I mean, you can spend hours and hours in finishing one image. And sometimes I really do that. Um, for now, and especially for demonstration purpose, I think we're ending up with this one. The final image looks like this. So now as you've seen my interpretation of uh, that Milky Way image, I want to show you a before and after. We have uh, what we just presented here on the screen on the left and uh, one of the raw files on uh, the right hand side. Now when we're zooming in, let's say one of these areas here, and you compare that, how much noise, how much magenta stuff, unwanted stuff is left here on the right hand side, and you compare it to the left, I mean, it's quite obvious. Um, I am very amazed that even the color of the stars, the blues, the yellows, oranges, are still retained here in the image. Very obvious, it becomes here in this area. Here on the right, before we uh, noise averaged the images, before the stacking, and just see how much of detail we managed to retain here on the left. A word to the processing. This particular image I like to uh, yeah, make it pop, to make the Milky Way really stand out. And uh, I'm fully aware this is not everyone's cup of tea. Usually when I publish an image like this I get comments like hey, I've been to so many dark places on the planet and the Milky Way never looks like that. That is right, the Milky Way does not look like that to the human eye. But my camera was capable of collecting light and collecting information way more than the human eye can see. And what I did here, I was working out that information we have in the raw file and uh, make it visible and present it. Now, if you don't like it, that's totally fine to me. I am not going to argue about personal taste, but my intention was to show you how you can work this information out 
I think I did. But the decision is yours. How far do you want to go? Do you prefer a more natural look or do you really want to make everything pop? And um, this is entirely up to you. I mean, everyone's taste is different. And uh, yeah, I think that makes us human. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got inspired. Hope you learned something about the use of different software we use today. Sequitur for stitching, Lightroom, Photoshop. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I am looking forward to see you again in part three of our little Milky Way mini series.